So the Game Freak leaks are continuing to give us even more information as I already made two prior videos kind of giving the information about first the initial huge thing that came out with all of the information that we learned from this massive Game Freak hack but also we had another follow-up video that went into some additional details about upcoming things with like Generation 10 and Pokemon Legends EA while also learning a lot of other interesting things about past Pokemon games and so this is going to be a part three now as even more interesting stuff has come out with like Pokemon X and Y, Pokemon Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire, but we've also started even going into the Switch games with some really cool stuff about Pokemon Legends Arceus. And so I don't know if we're going to be getting more stuff now with like Pokemon Sword and Shield and maybe Pokemon Let's Go and BDSP and stuff like that. So if there is still more stuff because it kind of seems like the leaks are starting to wind down now and we're not really getting like as many crazy things as we were before. If there's still a lot of other major things, then I might make like one final finale part four video after this one, but there is some good stuff in here that we can still talk about. Now real quick before we get started, I just want to give a quick shout out to the sponsor of today's video, Turtle Beach. Turtle Beach creates some of the world's best gaming headphones and they sent over their new Generation 3 Stealth 700s for me to check out. These are the new 2024 versions of the headset and come with extremely comfy cushions that fit great around your head while offering impressive sound quality. There's two crossplay transmitters so that you can put one on your console and one on a PC or any other device and switch instantly where the audio is coming from with the press of a button. With next generation noise cancellation tech inside of the mic, your friends will make sure that you're heard loud and clear. And with the holidays coming up, these are the perfect gift for anyone you know who plays a lot of online video games. So definitely check them out from the link in the description. And thank you so much again to Turtle Beach for sponsoring the video. Alright, so starting off with some more stuff about Pokemon X and Y, we actually have HD artwork now of the Kalos War that is mentioned inside of the game. And so this is really cool to see. We can actually see all of the different Pokemon that are participating in it. We've got like Rhyperior and Salamence and Talonflame and Abomasnow and Bisharp and Magnemite and Noivern here. And it's really cool to kind of just see this artwork. I really kind of love the styling for it. And then of course we've got AZ's Floet in the middle here. So this is just some really cool artwork to finally get in HD quality. Now in the last video I talked about how Southern Kalos was actually going to be a real thing and it was like an entire area that was almost as big as half the entire region of Kalos itself and now we've got some actual details here from internal documents at Game Freak that the stuff that was cut inside of Southern Kalos was two towns, two cities, four dungeons and eight routes. So this is honestly a substantial area like we can see here with eight routes, two cities, two towns and four dungeons like there's actually a lot of stuff that they planned here to be a part of Southern Kalos which really makes you kind of think now is this going to be something that was supposed to be inside of like the original base version of Pokemon X and Y or was this supposed to be a part of like the scrapped kind of sequels or like third version that was supposed to happen which actually got leaked in like that Nintendo hack that happened back in 2020 we found out that Game Freak was supposed to have a game come out in 2015 but then it never came out and they just focused more on Pokemon Sun and Moon so I'm guessing if this was actually content that they had planned maybe this was supposed to come out in like that Pokemon Z or like Pokemon X2 or Y2 or whatever they were gonna do because that would definitely be very enticing to get people to go out and buy this game because you're basically getting like half a region's worth of new areas and places to go and visit and stuff it really kind of just sucks how robbed we were of that but hopefully Pokemon Legends ZA is gonna give us some good stuff now with Kalos finally now for some really interesting lore for Pokemon X and Y, we've actually got information here that the ultimate weapon was apparently originally a living being being described as a vessel taken by a virus slash microorganism. So the ultimate weapon, I guess, was apparently going to somehow be a living thing at first, like an actual Pokemon or maybe something like that. And then this was supposed to be taken over by some type of virus or like a microorganism. And then I guess being used for evil and stuff. And I guess we've got like the concept artwork here here where we can see I guess this was all the way back from 2010 when this was being planned like it was some type of like I guess organism or something I guess I don't know if this is supposed to be like the actual ultimate weapon or if this is supposed to be like the virus thing that overtakes it but this is kind of sounding very just like typical normal JRPG like like you know and having a vessel and then having it being taken over like that's giving me very Final Fantasy or Xenoblade types of vibes which is kind of really crazy to see that inside of a Pokemon game but this would have been really cool I guess and I mean it really kind of gives you an idea for like their thought process with having like this war and this ultimate weapon and all this concept and idea that they had for Pokemon X and Y. 
Now it says here flying through the sky was originally planned for X and Y and it was later implemented into Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire. That's why sky battles existed in the first place and that's originally how we were supposed to find the legendary birds. So this is actually making a lot of sense now because there were those sky battles in X and Y where you would send out a flying type Pokemon and then have a battle against another one like up in the sky and it looks pretty cool but you would only have like one or two of those battles in the entire game from just a very few amount of trainers so it was always kind of just very weird why they implemented that but now it makes a lot of sense because if you were originally going to be able to just fly around on a Pokemon throughout the entire Kalos region then you would be running into a ton of sky battles against like Staravia or Fletchfinder and just other flying type Pokemon and that would also be I guess how you were able to find like Articuno, Moltres, and Zapdos which would have been just really cool so it kind of sucks that they weren't added into X and Y but I am happy that they were able to get this feature into Pokemon Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire because it was a lot of fun and also thank you for this Skyla artwork in the bottom here, definitely best girl. Now one of the coolest things that came out is some actual lore about AZ, who I still think is one of the coolest and most interesting kind of characters that they've added into the main series games because this is essentially a guy who's literally been alive for like a thousand years with like no explanation as to how he's able to live for that long and I'm really hoping that Legend ZA, even if they're gonna have to like rework some stuff now because of that and kind of making it make sense, I do hope that they go more into his character and add some actual closure and some more interesting stuff about this character inside of that game but with the original character profile that we have for X and Y, for AZ, it says here, the final opponent of the protagonist, driven by obsession, completes the ultimate weapon. This weapon is said to have the power either to destroy the world or resur resurrect the dead. The opponent believes that by wiping out the decaying world and having their descendants rule, a better future can be ensured. So this is essentially who was supposed to be the original kind of villain of the game. Like AZ was supposed to be the big bad and I guess he was supposed to fill out the ultimate weapon and kind of create it all again. And then I guess he was supposed to try to wipe out the entire world and then basically have his own descendants rule the entire world and that would be kind of a more safer and better future for the world to happen. And it says down here, Lysander didn't exist, AZ was Team Flares' final boss. So this is actually one of the craziest things. So AZ was actually supposed to be a villain and it's honestly kind of hard to tell because with the game that we got, we, we kind of see AZ a couple times throughout the game. There's a couple of lines with him. And then I remember like the thing I distinctly remember is like after you beat the champion and after you're going through like your Hall of Fame ceremony, AZ shows up there and you have like one final battle with him. But it's not really that hard or anything, but you just have that and then his Floet comes back and stuff. I always just thought it was kind of very confusing and didn't make any sense as a kid. But that's basically what we had for AZ. So I'm hoping that Legend ZA is going to add more to his character because I do think this is one of the more interesting characters that they made. But there's just so much kind of random stuff all over the place that it doesn't make any sense. Now this is pretty disappointing to hear, but another discarded feature from Pokemon X and Y was to create your own custom gyms. And it says here, players would have been able to create their own original gyms and share them online. Other players can attempt to conquer these gyms, and once a gym is conquered, the gym leader, an NPC version of that player, can join the player's gym. And the gym leader can be placed as a member of their original gym. So this is actually sounding so much fun. It's kind of like secret bases, but more battling focused, and I feel like this would have just been so much fun if you could make your own gym and kind of deck it out with like different themes and then have like different kind of areas and stuff that you could like design like the interior of the gym with like different NPC trainers and stuff and then finally have like your own gym leader with like an AI version of you fighting for you for the other people who come and conquer your gym and they send out the Pokemon that you assigned them with your own movesets and stuff and it would have just been so cool if you could go and visit your friends' gyms and then have like these different gyms being shared online. It just sounds like it would have been a ton of fun and so so Pokemon X and Y is never beating like the allegations for like the game with the most potential because it really kind of shows you like all these amazing ideas that they had for like flying around, Southern Kalos, creating your own gyms and all this other stuff that basically had to get scrapped I guess because of how sloppy that development went with all the different things that, that they were adding into these games. Now we even have information that came out about Pokemon Legends Arceus, so we can see here that the prototype for this game for some reason used a character model of Brock. And so I don't know why they did this, but it's actually really funny kind of just seeing Brock inside of this game. Like it for sure is him because we can see him in this image right here. It's kind of funny. I'm guessing they just picked like a random model to use to kind of just test around stuff, but it is funny seeing that he was kind of used in the prototype of the game. 
And then we also have confirmation that Legends Arceus takes place 150 years before Diamond and Pearl and Platinum. So I know there was a lot of speculation, like is it, you know, 400 years in the past? Is it thousands of years in the past? Now we know for sure that Game Freak themselves is saying this is 150 years before the events of Gen 4. And then we've also got more stuff here saying Pokemon Legends Arceus was delayed. It seems like this has become a common occurrence for the Legend series that planning started in June of 2019 and development was planned to end on July 2021 for a late 2021 release. So this game was supposed to come out in 2021, but then I guess just because of the delays, it got pushed to early 2022 because it was weird how this game came out in January 2022 and then literally the next month they were like, oh, by the way, here's Generation 9 with Scarlet and Violet. Like, like, it just felt like the game didn't get any life to kind of actually breathe. So this makes a lot more sense if it was supposed to come out in late 2021. And we've actually got information as to why that might have happened. So I'm going to skip this for a second here. But it says here, Game Freak decided early on that they were not going to do a Diamond and Pearl remake. It seems like they backtracked at the last moment and hired Ilka for it probably because of the delay and that makes sense like this might be because of why the game got delayed because they had to essentially make like an entire other game and even if it wasn't Game Freak making it they still had to help and kind of like look over all of that and stuff so maybe that's why the game had to get delayed but it says here based on traditional development timeline a Diamond and Pearl remake could be expected but we are deciding not to create a simple proper remake of the original using current technology this time. So that is just straight up saying like, yeah, we're not using the Sword and Shield engine and making a remake like how we've usually had remakes happen where they just use the engine of the latest generation with like Oras using the generation's engine of X and Y. And then, you know, we had like Hardcore and Soul Silver using Gen 4's engine and all of that. So they straight up said like, yeah, we're not using the Sword and Shield engine to make a remake of Diamond and Pearl. And instead, we aim to create something that will become the technical foundation for future entries in the series by taking on the challenge of innovating both the gameplay and technology while keeping in mind the next generation of Pokemon games. And so obviously this makes a lot of sense because with kind of the open spaces and areas to wander around in, with Pokemon Legends Arceus, obviously with Scarlet and Violet being full on open world, it makes a lot of sense that they kind of just wanted to have a like foundation and get, sign of, get, get some more kind of like experience working with these types of games. So I guess that, that can kind of make sense with what they decided to do. And I really loved Legends Arceus, so I'm happy with what they did, but this kind of gives you the idea for like why we didn't get like a traditional remake of Pokemon Diamond and Pearl. And going into this like last thing right here, this is the really interesting thing here to me where it says here Pokemon Legends Arceus was designed to attract a different demographic to the Pokemon Core series. They specifically mentioned that they wanted to attract more core gamers into the franchise. And so this honestly makes a lot of sense because Pokemon Legends Arceus, while a lot of Pokemon fans do love this game, there are also a lot of Pokemon fans and people that I've seen who say that they found Pokemon Legends Arceus to be very boring. They don't like it. They don't think that there's much to do in them. And this is honestly basically what I like to call the Breath of the Wild effect at this point, where it's essentially a brand new game. It's innovative. It changes the gameplay. It does a lot of different things for a main series game, like from what you're used to with like a lot of the different entries that have come out in the past. And so this is obviously going to bring in a lot of people because this game was very successful. It was just one game and it sold 14 million copies, which is really, really insane because a lot of times every single new generation that comes out, there's two versions and people buy both versions for whatever reason. So the actual like sales are very inflated because there's so many people just buying both versions of the game. But if one game itself, just Legends Arceus, was able to sell 14 million, it really kind of shows you how massive this game actually was. And so the thing about this is that it's really kind of like the Breath of the Wild effect where Breath of the Wild and Tears of the Kingdom were both insanely successful for Zelda and it does bring in a lot of new people into the Zelda series but the thing about it is that there's also a lot of like traditional Zelda fans who don't like the actual gameplay of that game. They don't like the direction that Zelda is going with that whole open world aesthetic and all of that because they feel like that it's not really as good as like the traditional games that they've been used to with like Ocarina of Time and Skyward Sword and Twilight Princess and those types of games. And that's essentially what we've had with Pokemon Legends Arceus as well where I really loved the game, and even as a main series Pokemon fan, I thought the game was freaking incredible. I had a lot of fun with it. I know a ton of people who I know as my friends who didn't really play Pokemon who got this game. But basically, I know there was also a lot of other, like, actual Pokemon fans who were really disappointed by this game, said that it was a letdown, they didn't like the gameplay style, they thought it was boring or whatnot. So you're always kind of going to have that when you try to do a new formula like this, but I really feel like it is good for bringing more people 
into the franchise and I do feel like they succeeded in that and I don't mind if they make like Legends into this own thing with now Legends EA coming now too like these are like the action RPG games that are more focused and like more gameplay and like you're gonna have more stuff to do in that sense and then you've got like the more simpler traditional games for just like the more core like uh, Pokemon fans who just grew up playing those games and really enjoyed that I wouldn't mind if they decide to have like those two different types of branches with Pokemon games. And finally, the last thing that we've got here is some exciting stuff about Nintendo's next generation system and also Pokemon Legends ZA. So it says here, Ounce, which is the codename for the Switch 2, seems to use the same tools and ROM format that Nintendo currently uses for Switch 1. ROMs are still NSPs, but obviously they have new encryption keys that only Nintendo has. So what this seems to me is that like the next generation Switch is still gonna be using the same type of file format and ROM that we have on the current Nintendo Switch. Switch. And for that, it really kind of screams backwards compatibility in case some of you guys don't believe it because at this point, I feel like it's pretty much all but confirmed. I'm pretty sure that there's going to be backwards compatibility. They would be very stupid to not have the ability to play all of your existing Switch games on the next system as well. But if they're using the same format too, that to me definitely shows that, yeah, they've definitely thought about this and they're going to be bringing that so that you can have backwards compatibility with everything compatible with the Switch 1 games and then also the Switch 2 games. But then we also got information here about Pokemon Legends ZA, just some very generic stuff where it says here, according to Ku, the art style of Legends ZA is similar to Scarlet and Violet. So it seems like you're not going to be getting kind of like that old, old fashioned aesthetic that we had with Pokemon Legends Arceus. And so it's, instead, it's going to be looking like very like bright and vibrant and modern, I guess, because that's essentially what Scarlet and Violet looked like. And honestly, I did think that the models inside of that game were really good. Like I loved how Magnemite was really shiny looking and how Saviper had the scales on it and everything too. So if we're having those types of models be inside of Pokemon Legends ZA, I do think the game itself is going to look really nice but I'm interested to see how the art style is going to work with like Lumio City and all of that if it's going to be following the art style of Pokemon Scarlet and Violet. But with that, there you go. Those are pretty much all of the leaks that have come out so far about Pokemon X and Y, as well as Pokemon Legends Arceus, and just some other little tidbits of information about future stuff like the Switch 2 and Legends ZA and all of that. If you guys enjoyed the video, definitely be sure to click that like button and also subscribe to the channel as well, as I'm definitely going to have some more videos talking about Pokemon stuff, so be sure to subscribe so you don't miss out on that. If there is a lot of other stuff that comes out, I might make a final part forward to this and really kind of conclude everything. But yeah, definitely be sure to subscribe so you don't miss out on future videos and also comment down below and let me know what you guys think about this how do you guys feel about all of this information that's come out from these leaks and how do you feel about like kind of the stuff that was scrapped and the other ideas and all of that that they have here inside of these pokemon leaks and what do you guys think about the stuff with the future stuff as well with like pokemon legends za's art style and all of that be sure to comment down below and let me know but if you don't have anything to say about it just comment your favorite emoji down below for some engagement i would really appreciate it Go follow me on Twitter at Agile Arrows. You can be featured in videos and also join my Discord server as well. We've got a bunch of people in there who are always talking about Pokemon and Smash Bros and Nintendo. So definitely be sure to join that. But yeah, that's pretty much it. Thank you so much for watching.